What's up with you? Fortex video with a full signature ability Pokemon team. Now we're going to be doing this for Generation 8. There's some really, really cool abilities actually introduced into Generation 8. I picked out six of them that I thought were pretty cool and come up with some amazing sets. Now yesterday I put up a full Snom team or the other day. A lot of you actually didn't get to see that one. So make sure you check it out if you haven't already. I'll leave the link in the description. You can also follow me on Twitch for all my live streams. Without further ado, let's get into it. Today I've got two battles and uh, this is a fairly long video exactly like something else. Uh, this is a battle against Piccoloma on my Discord. Discord. You can check my Discord out. That's in the link of uh, the video as well, a description place. All right, we got a Galvantula lead, and I'm starting things off with Esku. So Esku's signature ability is Ice Face. Pretty much, it's 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 quite descriptive, guys. It's a block of ice on its head. Now, what that does, obviously, it acts as like a substitute against uh, physical type moves. Unfortunately, on the special side, it doesn't work too well. But on the physical side, it's very, very good. Now, I actually can uh, take one hit, and then obviously it falls down, and also changes the form of the Esku too. So it's a little bit more tanky on this side, and uh, when the ice block goes, it's a little bit more offensive. Now, you can actually get that ice head uh, coming back with the uh, hail falling on the field, so you can Dynamax your Pokemon, get that hail to fall, and get the ice face to appear again. So it's a very, very good sweeper uh, in that sense. Now, on this set, I'm running a special one. We've got Soak and Freeze Dry. Actually, you get those two moves, which are pretty cool. So we're going to soak that spider down the water spout, and we're going to freeze it, and it's going to go down in one shot. Now, the other moves I gave it were Hydro Pump and Substitute as well. We had uh, max speed and max special attack. I gave it modest nature because I wanted to hit as hard as possible because its special attack isn't all that good. Mostly it's used as like a belly drum or physical sweeper, right? Works very nicely. Next Pokemon we got is Center Scorch. So they probably don't think I've got a water type move. Now, I already know the Hydro Pump isn't going to take it out one shot, right? But I thought if I can at least dent this thing with one, um, if this is a physical, like, you know, like I say, like a Fire Lash, Center Scorch, something like that, I should be able to, uh, you know, two hit KO. So unfortunately, Hydro Pump is going to miss, but the Fire Lash is going to land there. As you can see, uh, it actually takes the hit. It drops my defense still, and the Ice Face goes away. There you go. It's a little it's a little Pingu Penguin. So the Ice Face has gone. Now I'm in much more of an offensive form here, but I don't have the Ice Block on my face anymore. So if I don't take this out right, I'm definitely going to go down to a Fire Lash. So finally, Hydro Pump hits there. Hydro Pump looks like really, really cool, and uh, does some pretty good damage to the Sinner Scorch there. Over half health. I was actually pretty happy with that. Unfortunately, that first miss really cost me actually taking the Center Scorch out. And uh, SQ is going to go down. But it did a good job. Got rid of Galvantia and did a nice dent of damage to the Center Scorch. Next Pokemon we got is Cramorant. Now, Cramorant is my very favorite uh, Generation 8 Pokemon. And it's got such a cool ability. Now, Cramorant in its design looks a little bit plain, right? But it does have like a super, super cool ability. It actually does a couple of things. It's got Gulp Missile as its ability. So you might have seen like a little fish or a Pikachu in its mouth. It actually has two different effects. So when you use Surf or Dive Right, you can get the effect to actually happen. And uh, as you can see, the Center Scorch is going to go down to that Surf. And now I've got a little fish in my mouth, a Baby Barrascuda. So since I've got this little fish in my mouth now, after if I get hit by this, it'll actually fire off uh, some damage against the opponent. And it does a quarter damage to the opponent and drops your attack by one stage. However, if you're on a quarter or lower health with the Pikachu, you have like a Pikachu in your mouth and the Pikachu will actually paralyze the opponent instead of dropping uh, the attack stat. So it's got two different little effects. So Golospot's going to go for a first impression there. I'm going to spit my fish right at its face, does some pretty good damage and uh, we get a nice attack drop there too. Sorry, a defense drop if I said attack. Um, we got Rocky Helmet on this set as well. So I thought that could work really, really well. So that's some like extra, extra damage. We got max speed and max special attack. In the rain, this thing hits pretty hard. Plus, we've got Hurricane as well. So, Hurricane is going to be 100% accuracy. And uh, we're also going to have Surf hitting a little bit harder. Now, I can go for an Endure here to actually get that Pikachu up on Cramrad. And then I can spit that Pikachu right back at the opponent and uh, get some extra Rocky Helmet damage. That was sort of like the plan on this set. I reckon the move in Dua is like really, really perfect for this Pokemon because you can you can almost choose what effect you want to have, right? So we've got a liquidation from the Golospod. Even though it's not very effective, it's got the rain up and it's definitely going to take me out. So it's a definite good thing that I went for the Endure there. So not only did Endure actually uh, make me live that one, the Rocky Helmet actually activated the emergency exit, swapping out the Golospod and uh, a new Pokemon is going to swap in. So that's pretty nice. I'm happy with that one. And we're also on one health too. Now, obviously, you need to get the uh, the effects by going for a dive or a surf. Surf generally uh, is, is a better move because, um, you know, dive takes two turns. Anyway, so we've got the Durant coming out. Durant is much faster than me. 
So I'm a little bit worried here. I don't want to swap out because there's really not much point at this stage. So I thought, okay, if it's going to be a hustle set, it could miss. Or, you know, they could try and set up. And we got Crunch missing there, which is great. And uh, now we got activation. As soon as I seen the miss, I knew this thing would have blunder policy. What blunder policy does, if you miss due to accuracy, it'll boost your speed, which is pretty cool. So going for that surf in the rain there. Durant's special defense is like rather bad. And now I've got a Pikachu in my mouth, people. This is this is still my favorite Pokemon in generation. So now I've got a Pikachu you squirming in my mouth which is like really really nice i can go uh for a endure here so what that's going to do the goal of spot's going to have to attack me right it doesn't matter you know what it does to me if i go for endure the pikachu's going to get spat at it right and it's going to do like a quarter damage and then it's going to do actually paralyze the opponent as well which is really good and then rocky helmet is also going to kick in as well so sort of like a little strategy uh, that i came up with. so we've got an aqua jet here i thought this was an aqua jet or sucker punch usually it's got one or the other or both and uh, we're going to spit that Pikachu right at the Golos Pod. It does some really good damage there and paralyzes it. Uh, we've got to paralyze now. I can go for some extra Rocky Helmet damage, but the opponent lives on one health. One health. I actually thought it would take it out. So now I've got to run the risk here of attacking them or swapping. I thought maybe if I just attack them, they could get paralyzed. And then we can start the uh, you know shenanigans all over again, I guess. Anyway, I went for the risk and unfortunately it didn't pay off. But Golos Pod is actually going to take my Cramorant down, but Cramorant actually did really well then. I think Cramorant actually took that Golos Pod out only with it, I think it only took it out with a Fish Pikachu damage, a Rocky Helmet. I don't even think I attacked that once with Cramorant, <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, so we got uh, four Pokemon down, so things are looking pretty good at the moment. I'm uh, I'm like super happy about this one. So now the next Pokemon coming in is the Frostm uh, Frostmob. Frostmoth looks pretty cool, Shiny. Its wings are sort of like trans... Wait, are they transparent green? I'm trying I'm trying to see if they're green or is that the stadium? I think they're green. Okay, uh, anyway, we've got the transparent... No, they're green. I actually can see the slight little green tinge to them and its, and its eyes, of course. So we got a blizzard there. I actually misclicked and went for an explosion instead of Flare Blitz. I thought, well, Flare Blitz is going to probably take me out anyway after the Frostmoth's, you know, attacking me. And, uh, you know, instead of that happening, I accidentally clicked explosion which wasn't too good but at least it took out the uh, frost moth and i uh, still got three other pokemon so it wasn't so bad there but make sure you pay attention to your moves people next pokemon we got is the butterfree uh butterfree probably would have outsped me anyway if i lived and you know taking me out with whatever hidden power ground or something all right next pokemon we got is the butterfree i've got runarigus now runarigus has wandering spirit wandering spirit is pretty much just like mummy on copericus right so it uh, passes the uh, Wandering Spirit to the opponent, and then you get the, uh, you know, you obviously you get the opponent's um, ability too. The only problem with it, it can keep passing back and forth on contact and things like that. So you don't really retain the ability. If, 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 you, if you could retain it possibly, but there's a high chance of it, you know, the ability swapping to the opponent, right? It'd be great if it, uh, yeah, if it didn't, right? So now we got our big old G-Spot Butterfree here, and I've got in this set a Trick Room, Phantom Force, Earthquake, and Destiny Bomb. Now, I can't use Destiny Bond against this uh, Butterfree at all because it won't work for a stunt. So I thought, okay, if I set up the Trick Room here, I've got a couple of other Pokemon. I might be able to you know, swap in Runarigus later on uh, when there's like, you know, maybe one or two turns of Trick Room left. And, uh, you know, and when it's not in uh, G-Max form either, and then I can take it out that way because this thing hits pretty hard, right? So I'm guessing that's coming off, I'd say, Giga Drain. Uh, the good thing about that is I've got a little bit of health recovery. Now, I've got two other Pokemon that I haven't used yet. I thought I could swap them in. I thought here Toxtricity would be a good swap in because it would resist that move, and I'm pretty sure Butterfree is going to go for that move as well. So Toxtricity. Let me bring that uh, set up. We got a... Uh, I've got a mix set on this one. we got Shift Gear, Boom Burst, Gung Shot, and Drain Punch. And we got the uh, ability Punk Rock. So what Punk Rock does, it boosts uh, sound uh, sound based moves by uh, 0.5, which is pretty cool. And also got the uh, Throat Spray item on there as well, which is going to power up the Boom Burst. Uh, this is like a fully mixed set, so I can disguise it as like a special one, but I've got Shift Gear to boost my speed, and I can fire off some pretty nasty Gunk Shots as well. So Gunk Shot really, really hits hard on the Butterfree there. It's a, like a definite two-hit KO. Unfortunately, we got a Max Mind Storm, and Toxtricity is going to go down there. Doesn't matter. I did a lot of damage there. We still have uh, one more turn. Sorry, we got one, one more turn left on the Dynamax. Sorry, the G-Max Butterfree, but G-Max Butterfree is going to go small the next turn, so we're done. Now I can swap in Copricus and either go for a uh, you know a destiny bond or i can go for a phantom force this is a phantom force power herb set to max health and max attack brave nature under trick room so you want to go for those zero iv like ivs there 
I nearly said I booze. Okay, I can go for anything. Destiny Bond. Uh, I mean, Phantom Force would take it out. I'm just going to go for Destiny Bond. It doesn't really matter here. So I thought, you know, Butterfree should uh, you know, definitely be able to take me out at this range. So go for the Destiny Bond, hoping the Butterfree will take me down. And Butterfree is going to be going for a Giga Drain like I knew it would. And uh, unfortunately for me, Giga Drain actually it doesn't take me out. I live on three health. And now Butterfree is going to get the health back. So like, oh, that didn't really work out. Really, like I, like I wanted to play it. So I can go for a Phantom Force here. I've still got one more trick for him up. And, you know, your Butterfree's defenses aren't the greatest in the world. So going for the Phantom Force, I've got the Power Herbs, so they'll activate it, like, right away. And Butterfree is going to get spanked on its little purple bottom. And that one, my friends, is the first game. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Rin Rickus' attack actually isn't all that bad, either. It's sort of better at, like, support, in my opinion. But, uh... At least it has some sort of like presence about it. All right, let's get on to the second battle. Now, the second battle, I got to feature the Pokemon I didn't include in this team. I probably put it in the thumbnail, which is the Curse Ola. So I will show the Curse Ola in this battle. All right, this is the battle against Zan on my Discord. And uh, he's also running a theme team too. I wonder if you can guess it. So we've got Booty Head 2 here. I mean, he's got two booties on his head. I mean, that that's, that's, a, a, that's a blue... What's it? It's a blue and black booty. Damn, some. All right, I can go for... This is quite good because I can go for a freeze dry like straight up here and it's going to be super effective against Seismic Toad. That, that's actually really, really good. So go for the freeze dry on the Seismic Toad and uh, poor Seismic Toad is going to go down in one shot. That was a really, really harsh matchup. You know, for uh, the Seismatoad there. All right, next Pokemon we got coming out is a Booty Pincher. Now, I mean, I don't know if I want to sit on that uh, Pinchurchin at all. I know they call like it could be it could actually be called pin cushion as well. It's like a little pin cushion. You have the you have the little cushion. You put the needles in there. My nan used to have one of them like 69 years ago. Anyway, um, I can't do it a lot against this Pokemon. All I can do is go for the soak and then go for the freeze dry. I think it'll be like a one to two hit KO against Pinchurchin, depending on like what EVs are and stuff. So going for the soak there, at least I can get rid of um its stab as well. And now we got a curse coming from the Pinchurchin. So I do have the ice face up, so if it does plan to go for any physical attacks, you know, I'm going to be able to get around that one too. Uh, the electric terrain is on the field, so any electric type moves are going to be dropping pretty hard there. Now I can go for a freeze dry. There's no point going for a hydro pump because it's now, it's now a water type. So go for freeze dry on the pit churchin. And uh, little pit churchin gets hit really, really hard against that. It doesn't take it out. It's fairly bulky. It's all like Pikumiku, like... Rip off Pukumuku, but with a little bit more attack presence to it and a little bit less bulk. Okay, so Ice Face is gone there, which is, like, you know, good for the opponent. I don't really... I, I could Dynamax here and get that back, but I thought, nah, it's a little bit, like, early on in the game. I could just go for another freeze dry and, you know, take this out quite easily. The only thing I was worried about here if I actually missed the freeze dry, which I didn't. So Booty Pincher is going to go down. Have you figured out what the team is, people? Have you figured out... Okay, next Pokemon we got is uh, my smelly, uh, your smelly booty, smelly my booty, your smelly booty. Guys, get get that smelly booty out of here. So, Skuntek is a pretty uh, bulky Pokemon, right? So, I thought, let's just go for Hydro Pump and get as much damage on it as possible because there's no point going for a Soak. Um, I don't want to, like, look, like, waste any turns, right? So, now we've got a Flamethrower coming from the Skuntek, and uh, it's going to hit me pretty hard. The Skuntek has a lot of, like, uh, cool, interesting moves it learns, too. So, this was actually really bad. Um... But, but, but more for me, right? So I put a wiki berry on this set, right? But then I forgot it was the wrong berry. Like, I was going for my bag, putting the items on. So if you obviously, if you do the wrong berry, you actually get a confusion. So if it's negative, um, like negative special attack, right? Um, with, with the wiki, wiki berry, right? At least the tricky wiki berry. It'll actually confuse you. So unfortunately, I put that wrong item on there. And it actually cost me to hit myself. And now the skunk tank is going to take me out of flamethrower. Don't ask me how skunk tank actually knows flamethrower. Like, I'm trying to imagine a skunk going for a flamethrower. Throw. Um, I, I really can't imagine that, but but yeah, my, my wrong item actually like messed me over there. So I've still got five more Pokemon. I've taken two out with that, so I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't actually too worried at all. Now the next Pokemon I could use against Skuntank, um, I, to hit it like pretty hard would be my Cram Rain. You guys seen this strategy already? It works pretty good. I might be able to get like some Pikachu paralysis up, or even a little Barrascooter baby against it. Now I can go for Surf. I can go for Rain Dance. I decided to go for Surf because I want to get my ability Gulp Missile going. Um, do you guys like Cram Rain? Like it's, it's it has to be like my favorite Gen 8 Pokemon, but, like quite. But like quite a lot. Anyway, we got a G, a G. No, we don't have a G spot. We got a Dynamax Skunk Tank. This is this is one smelly Skunk Tank, guys. I've actually never seen a skunk in real life. Like just like you know, go past. Are they actually really smelly in real life? Can someone in the comment section tell me that? 
Um, or is it just like a, is it like a, a skunk stereotype? Anyway, we got smell, uh, smell my booty uh, coming up here. If this hits me with any kind of poison attack, it's going to boost his special attack. That's sort of what I was thinking it would do, right? So now I'm going to transform into my little baby Barrascooter form, and it's going to go for a max ooze. Like I caught it, I kind of expected it to do that. So it's a three hit KO. Um, after the max ooze boost in special attack, it will not be a three hit KO. It will be a two hit KO. So I'm going to fire off my little fishy again there. Does some uh, good damage to the Dynamax Pokemon and drops it. It does uh, not attack defense. I always get the attack and defense mixed up. Now, the problem is that it actually got a little bit of recovery from the uh, Black Sludge as well. So uh, most, well, I mean, uh, probably about half the damage I did to it from the uh, Baby Barra Scooter is healed. Now, I've got to think here. I was thinking, should I go for Endure, right? And then attack it, or should I just, you know, attack it? So I decided to go for the Endure and stall that uh, Dynamax out a little bit because Dynamax is such a powerful mechanic. Like, you pretty much have to... Take the Dynamax Pokemon out, store them out, or make them swap. That's the, that's the only way to get around it, right? It's a very, very powerful mechanic. So I'm going to endure that hit, which is really nice, at the cost of giving the Scum Tank another special attack boost and some more recovery. Now I can go for a Surf here and get some more damage against the uh, Skunk Tank. That was sort of like my uh, my, sort of like my last option there. So I've got my, uh, I'm on low health. I can get the Pikachu in my mouth now. The good thing is you get the Pikachu in your mouth before the opponent attacks. So that Pikachu will fire off and paralyze the opponent. So down goes Chromat. Chromat actually did pretty well there. Um, it didn't do like a lot of damage, but his ability and stuff actually come in like really, really handy. Almost took it out there with the Pikachu. One day I've got to do a full Cramorant team. Someone better suggest that in the comment section one day. All right, so we've got a little bit more recovery there on the Skunk Tank. I've still got four more Pokemon that I want to use against this. So Toxtricity, it's time to shine, baby. So I was like, okay, this will probably be able to wreck me with a Flamethrower. I'd say it's got, what's it got now? Plus two or three in special attack, uh, but it is paralyzed. I don't think it's got Sucker Punch on it. That's like the only other thing I could uh, think of, but not that it was going to do any damage uh, to me anyway. So go for the Boom Burst here. I sort of want to make them think that it's a, a special set, but it's not. And uh, I actually want to activate my Throat Spray as well. So Critical Hit there. It, it totally matters, guys. I wouldn't have got that KO otherwise. So uh, the Throat Spray is coming into effect here. I think Throat Spray is pretty much brought in for Toxtricity. Like, it's sort of like May for it. All right, so Bang My Booty's going to come in here. How did, like, seriously, like, honestly, like, how can Pimp not go through, but Bang My Booty goes through as a nickname? Like, how does this even work? All right, so Bang My Booty, right? Someone's going to make that into MP3 clip. I just know. They're going to make that shit as their ringtone. Like, you know, the, the, the clock strikes 5 o'clock in the morning, and my voice will be like, Bang My Booty. Get get that on your alarm clock, boys and girls. All right, so down goes my Toxtricity. I would have loved to use Gunk Chop, but I got outsped. So Runarigus is going to come in. Uh, this is actually a really uh, threatening Pokemon for my team. I had a lot of trouble with this. Now we've got Trick Room, Destiny Bond. I know that, I definitely know that I won't be able to take this out. Probably about like two to three hit KO with Phantom Force. And after my Power Herb's gone, it's not like I'm going to be able to, you know, live a couple of grass attacks too. So it's going to go for a bulk up. I'm guessing it has drum beating because, uh, it, you know, bang my booty and stuff like that. And bulk up. Uh, so we got the Trick Room happening on the field here. I'm going to swap Runarigus out. And now I'm going to go into Cursola. Now we didn't get to see Cursola in the last battle. Cursola is a Perish body set. So when um when Cursola is hit by uh, like a, a physical move, which is um like a contact, it'll actually activate uh, Perishong. I lived on one health there. That was so so lucky. And uh, Cursola is actually going to be under the Trick Room. So I have an opportunity to go for the Sap Zipper, not Sap Zipper, the Strength Sap on uh, Bang My Booty. Man, how many times have I said Bang My Booty in this battle? Someone better check that too. All right, so we got Strength Sap. I've got to do this. I've got no. I've got no hope of actually taking this out apart from actually dropping its attack. So all I can do is helplessly go for Strength Sap and hope this uh, doesn't actually take me out the crit. So obviously I'm going to get all my health back. And uh, now we've got Bang My Booty going for another uh, drum. But I think Bang My Booty is probably one of the best nicknames I've seen in quite a while. I do so that I've come across. Um, so we've got some more left over recovery. Like, look how much that did still. That still did three quarters of my health. Or almost three quarters. So I can't do anything here. I can just go for Strength Sap. I really don't like stalling too much, but I've got zero options here. It's not like I can swap into it or anything like that. And uh, I, I wanted to get the... Um, if, uh, if, if, to take it out, right, I was like, I want to get the yeah, Rillaboom in range of my Copperigus, you know, to take it out. Um, maybe not in this matchup. Like, I want to get rid of its stats, and then maybe on in the later on in the battle, right? So as you can see now, the drum bed is not doing as much damage as before. It's only doing half my health, so it's a clear three hit KO. 
They could go for another bulk up, but there's really not much point. I can just keep dropping their attack. So I'm expecting a swap very soon. We're hoping for a swap. And uh, now we got mostly booty coming in here, which <laughs> that's actually a pretty good name too, because it actually it legitimately is mostly booty. So we're going to go for a whirlpool there. Speed me right around, baby. And uh, we've got a little bit of uh, trapping going on here. So the idea of this set is, right, we got whirlpool to trap the opponent in, right? And when uh, we got a physical contact new move hitting me, right, Perish Body will come into effect, and that'll have the effect of Perish Song. However, that'll faint uh, both me and the opponent in three turns. So obviously, I stall the opponent out until that time, right? And then I, on the last turn of the Perish Body, I'll swap it out, and the opponent will, uh, you know, get KO'd. I was actually going to get a sweep on this Pokemon before, but, uh, you know, I got Timer Stall. So anyway, uh, speaking of getting wrecked, I got a wreck by Dragon Tail Hustle there. I got critted. I don't know if that mattered, but... Uh, that dropped really, really hard. And Perish Body comes into effect. So as you can see, the opponent now has three turns, exactly like Perisom. Right. Now we got mostly booty. I was thinking if I could get Trick Room up, I could have like a chance of going back into this battle, right? Uh, I wasn't sure what mostly booty actually had. So mostly booty's gonna go for another Dragon Tail. It misses and I get the Trick Room up. So that was pretty lucky because I wouldn't have actually got the, uh, you know, the Trick Room up there. So now Trick Room is up. Mostly booty's got, uh, you know, two more turns. Uh, um, uh, apart from that, it's gonna lose its booty in two turns. I can go for an Earthquake. I could have gone for Earthquake earlier on, but I decided I really needed Trick Room up. You know, if, say, if, say if I got hit by that Dragon Tail earlier on, I probably just would have swapped it in and gone for Earthquake again there, you know, to get rid of it. Oh, right, so mostly Booty's going to go down there. And we still got two more Pokemon. Still got that Rillaboom from before, which is actually wrecking me. All right, so Bang My Booty's going to come <laughs> Bang my booty. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so bang my booty anyway is going to come in. I'm going to go for the Phantom Force, Phantom Force Power Herb and spank booty on the bum, uh, on the drum, I mean. And it's it's still not a two-hit KO. It's still, like, way off. So we've got another drum beat here. Now, the good thing about drum beating is it doesn't have any, like, uh, plus ones in attack or anything like that. So it's not as scary as it was before. So it's also going to drop my speed, which is good under the trick room. And plus, it's got leftovers. So I've got no way of taking this Pokemon. It's, like, way too bulky. Um, there's no way I'll be able to take it out with Phantom Force. So I'm going to go for Destiny 1 and uh, cross my fingers and hope to the booty god that they go for another drum beating, which they do. And uh, I'm going to go down, but so is the Rillaboom. Now, I've got one more Pokemon left. I had a plan, but I was a little bit worried about the Trick Room too. Uh, when I say Trick Room, I was talking about like the amount of turns that I had left. Uh, so Bang My Booty is finally going to go down. That was the end, but that was the definite MVP of the team. That was such a scary Pokemon. And uh, now we got Colossal coming in. So the Colossal has the ability Steam Engine. What happens with Steam Engine if it gets um, if it gets hit by uh, a fire or water move? It'll raise its speed by plus six. So you can use this one with weakness pulse and stuff like that. So um, I'm running it like an awful physical set. I have to go for an Endure to get a weakness policy right. And my only option to take out Sandaconda in one shot is going to be a Max Flare G-Spot Colossal. Uh, the problem about that is I'm not really a fast Pokemon either. And, you know, I mean, Sandaconda is by no means a fast Pokemon either. But Colossal isn't very fast either. And I was sort of relying on having the steam engine up so I could, you know, outspeed everyone. Anyway, so we've got a big oven coming up there. And, man, look at those Dynamax candies kicking in there. One to two health. I couldn't have actually... I, I, I needed that one extra health. Anyway, so we've got a Zen Headbutt here. I was hoping Zen Headbutt would actually miss. And Colossal is going to go down. Unfortunately, I couldn't go for the Flare Bits because it definitely wouldn't have taken out. Even with the Critical Hit. Thank you, people, for watching both these battles. They were super fun. And I'll catch you probably tomorrow for another theme team or something along those lines. Peace out, people.